get to work, 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 work. Let's get to work, 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 work. Today, I'm gonna go over a video that I have never in my life shot and I'm 99.999% sure that no one else has ever seen as well. I'm not saying this is something that hasn't been talked about, but if you wanna become a master closer and you honestly wanna close anybody and everybody during negotiations, there's four types of people that you have to be aware of. And by the way, you're like, Andy, what are you holding in your hand? Let me tell you what it is. So this is 10 to 15, which I'm gonna to get to this in a second. Number one, I'm gonna go over the dominant, the social, the paste, and the precise. Those are the four types of customers that there are, that we sell. And I wanna go over those four types of customers with you. I'm gonna tell you what they want, and then I'm gonna tell you how to close them, which is crazy. So this isn't a script. It isn't a close like um, the price is too high and then I overcome it. This is reading and watching body language. And I'm gonna tell you, when, so I'll give you an example. When someone has their arms folded, I'm gonna tell you whether you should go for the clothes or not, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you rubbing the nose, uh, tapping the fingers, rubbing the back of the neck, playing with their hair. I, I'm gonna, every single one of these, I'm gonna tell you whether you should close or not close and what you should do. You're gonna love it, but if you would like a copy of this, it's pretty simple. Click on the link below, all you have to do is click on it and you can actually download this so you can read it, okay? So click on the link, you guys can download this. Let's rock and roll. Hey guys, it's Andy. I'm gonna be giving away a couple beach vacations, lots of free content. Make sure you're following me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You guys have a great day and don't miss some of this great stuff coming out. So this is gonna be reading body language during negotiations. I'm gonna give you the four types of customers that you have to understand. These are the four styles. So number one is gonna be dominant. The dominant is going to be aggressive. They're gonna be persistent. They're gonna be decisive, outspoken. Also, a lot of the times will be argumentative, abrupt, demanding, and impatient. That is gonna be your dominant style of customer, all right? Social, it's gonna be charming, talkative, enthusiastic, okay? This is your social type of customer. Also, they can be insecure and manipulative as well. So I want you to think about this. Paste, these customers, this is another style, this is number three, it's gonna be called paste. These customers have a strong sense of timing, they are easy to get along with, but are not going to let others pressure them into making premature decisions. They are patient, loyal, predictable, but also can be evasive and defensive if pressured. They usually seem in de decisive, indecisive, and to salespeople, they tend to back off, okay? So with that being said, that is a pace type of customer. Those customers always seem that they have a sense of time, right? They're always pressuring the time. Then we have the precise. The precise is gonna be cautious, obviously precise, and then thorough. They have tendencies to be perfectionist and may have a difficult time making a decision. They have a lot of questions, usually they're very opinionated too. So, you have four types of customers, you have four styles of customers. You have the dominant, you have the social, you have the paste, and you have the precise. Now, what does each one of them want? I'm gonna tell you, now that I told you who they are and what their style is, let me tell you what they want. Number one, a dominant customer, that, that style, they want to feel in control. You as a salesperson has to put the light on them. You can hold the spotlight, but who's in the spotlight? They are. So they want to feel in control. You have to make sure you handle that. You got to stroke their ego. Those are one of my favorite customers but how do you handle them? It's real easy. You make them feel in control and you stroke their ego. That's a dominant style, that's what they want. Social, social wants to be liked by you. That's their biggest deal. You gotta let them know how cool they are, man. You gotta let them know how they're the best customer that you had in your whole life and that they're amazing. And guess what? You have to make them look good among your peers. 
So if I was a salesman and I would walk into a customer, right? Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd walk with a customer back into the dealership after a test drive. I may walk by my GM or my manager and say, hey, I, I want to introduce you to my boss real quick. Hey, uh, sir, I want you to meet my customer. Listen, I'm telling you this. You know, I'm one of the top sales guys here. I sell tons of cars. She is one of the nicest ladies I've ever dealt with in my whole life. Unbelievable. I'm telling you, I'm going to adopt her or she's going to adopt me. Bottom line is, I love her. We're in a family reunion now. I love their family. Their kids are amazing. Whatever it is, compliment, compliment, compliment. Make them feel that they're very liked by you. Okay? So with that being said, um, let's get into paste. The paste customer, they want information. You know this customer, okay? Needed to, they want information, needed to make a decision in due time. That's what they tell you. We're just gathering information. So when we make a decision, we have all the information we need. I want to explain this to you. This customer is very closable, okay? But they always say they want time to think, right? That's that customer. But you have to give them supported facts to go for a close, okay? Also, very low pressure. Guys, I'm never high pressure. Anybody that's in the sales industry in this world has to apply pressure to make a sell, okay? Low pressure. These people require very low pressure. So it's not high, it's very low, okay? So ultimately, we always sell low pressure. We never sell high pressure. It's like a pressure cooker, high pressure. You turn it up, the meat explodes, customer's done. That worked 20 years ago, that don't fly anymore. Now we steadily ap apply very low pressure. Sell like a lion, act like a lamb. No one even feels the pressure. It's beautiful, okay? Um, precise, what does the precise customer want? Well, here's what they want. They want to make the right decision, okay? So how does that happen? Well, I, this is, this is what I like to do. When I know someone wants to make the right decision, and especially if they're a precise customer, if I identify that up front, which 99% of the salespeople will never try to identify a customer. Matter of fact, they'll try to sell them all the same, and they wonder why they get the results they get. This video will and can change your entire life because you can start to identify the different types of styles. So when a customer pulls up and they're aggressive, persistent, outspoken, you're like, dude, that's a dominant customer. I know him, now what does he want? He wants to feel in control. So what do I do? I stroke his ego, man. And you know what happens? He ends up buying for me. But you go to stroke a pace guy's ego, right? You go to take a guy right here that has a strong sense of timing and it doesn't work and you're going through this whole little system here of following and he doesn't want you to feel, uh, or he doesn't want to feel pressured, but you know, he feels like cause you're stroking his ego. Maybe you're trying to pressure him and guess what? He treats you differently. Look, I want you to identify these different styles, but on this one, on the precise and order the guy that wants to make the right decision. I like to bring up, I like to bring up my objections myself. Okay. So I bring up the objections before they do, and then I answer them on my own. I play a chess game with them. So what that looks like is if I'm sitting there and the guy's thinking about, you know, like, is this the right decision to make? I might say, hey, you know, 99% um, of our customers actually that purchase pickup trucks, just like the one that you're looking at, they're so happy. It's unbelievable. Within the next two years, they're actually back in here purchasing their second one. So I will tell you this, if you're envisioning it sitting in your driveway and if you're wondering, am I going to be happy? The answer is 5 million percent. Absolutely. Okay. So when I share that with you, that would me be asking a question, bringing up an objection and then answering it myself. Why? Because I'm a, a sell is made when a customer has something going on in their head and you finish the sentence or the thought or the thinking that they have in their head and you finish it. And when you finish it, they're like, Oh, wow. That's what I was thinking. It feels right. It must be meant to be. So what happens is you identify what it is that's going on in their mind with this customer. Are they thinking, is the deal right? And what is it that needs to be right about the deal? You need to identify it, bring that objection up, actually answer the question on your own. Now it fulfills the problem and you're done. So here's what we got. And this is called reading body language and negotiations, which is what I love because Body language is everything. Closing, negotiations, overcoming objections are what we're about to get into now and in reading their body language. 
This could be used from the handshake, okay? So we have two sides of this. We have customers coming in. This is their style. This is what they want. And then we have, when we get to the negotiation table with them, what are signs of things that people do that we actually need to um, see and become aware of? And guess what? When's the last time you've sat down with your customer and you thought, man, you know, if he does this with his hands and he's sitting there, you know, like the little steeple deal with their hands where they sit like this, you see people, they'll just be doing this. What does that mean? Is he ready to close or not close? That's the question. Well, I'm going to tell you, okay? So I'm going to give you 10 or 15 different signs that things that people could be doing what that means, and then if we should go for the close or not. Are you ready? And remember, if you want a copy of this, all you have to do is click on the link below, drill simple, click on, the, click, click on the link above, and just download it, print it off, and you can read exactly what I have here. That way you can study it and check it out, and you don't just have to watch this video a million times, although you can, okay? So, objection handling, closing techniques, body language. This would be, is it time to go for the close or is it not time? Okay, let's go through them. I'm gonna read them off here. That's why I want you to print this off. Um, so let's talk about folded arms. Folded arms is a defensive action, okay? This is a negative sign and you should not go for the close. Anytime somebody's doing this, guess what? Don't ask for their business. Don't go for the close. I want you to lean back. I want you to cross your legs and I want you to say something funny and get them laughing. Get those arms uncrossed and then move back into closing, okay? Let's talk about rubbing noses, okay? People rubbing their noses, right? When you see that happening, that means they don't believe you. They think you're lying. Don't go for the close, okay? This is the psychology of selling. Do you think you'd make more money in this business knowing about product knowledge or people knowledge? People knowledge. I'm giving it to you right now. My first 10 years in the car business, I didn't even know how to change a tire. I didn't know anything about cars, but I knew about people. Guess what? I get everybody needs to know product knowledge now, but I think that we over honestly misunderstand how important people knowledge is, okay? So the rubbing of the nose, they don't believe you, they think you're lying, don't go for the clothes. All right, tapping or drumming the fingers, okay? This would be them sitting there and they're just doing this. Guess what? That's an authoritative gesture. Customer thinks he or she is smarter than you. Don't go for the clothes. Rubbing the back of the neck, that's a negative sign. Anytime somebody's doing this, that means that that's bad. That's a bad sign, rubbing of the neck. This customer is not agreeing with what you're saying. Do not go for the clothes. That's not the time. I'm gonna give you the right windows, but that's not the window. So if you see the steepling of the fingers, right? which is like this, if you see the rubbing of the neck, the tapping of the fingers, if you see the, the, again, the rubbing of the nose or the folding of the arms, don't go for a close during those signs. Now, let's get into some positive signs. The patting or folding your hair, like people playing with their hair, you know what I'm saying? That right there, go for the close. That's a positive sign. That means they like what they're hearing, they're just kind of needed to be pushed to uh, the next step, all right? So this is eyes, and maybe you pay attention or maybe you don't, but I'm gonna tell you this. There's dilated pupils, there's people that have big eyes and there's small eyes, and the pupils can get dilated when negotiating. So, it's real simple. If the eyes are bigger, that's positive, go for the close. If they're smaller, it's negative, don't go for the close, okay? It means they're backing off. All right, let's move past that. That's something that a lot of people don't get, but I watch for it all the time. Just one more sign before I'll ask for their business. Okay, biting of the nails, that's insecure or nervous, nervousness, okay? Biting of the nails is insecure and nervousness. Be firm, but friendly. This person will be an easy close, okay? Be firm, be deadly with your words. All right, let's talk about the pulling or like playing with your ear that people are just like, you know what I'm saying, you're working a deal and there's like, you're just doing that. That's undecided, trying to make a decision. Go back and make another presentation or talk about the product one more time and how amazing it is. If you have to, say, man, you know what? Let me show you something real quick. Come with me. Come with me. And then take them outside. Say, look, let's walk around this two seconds. Look, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, can you not see that in your driveway? Is that not beautiful? 
Yes. Are you kidding me now? Let's pass go. Let's do this deal. They need to make a decision. Don't let them make it on their own. Bring the product back in. Bring leveraging back in what is going to be the beautiful consequence of them buying this car. What it'll look like in three weeks from now with this awesome decision they made. Okay. So let's talk about lighting a cigarette. Okay. This is something I've always loved. Anytime somebody says, Hey, let me smoke. Go for the clothes. That's awesome. Walk out there, shut them down while they're smoking every single time. That's a good sign. That's not bad. That just means they want to have a smoke. You know what I'm saying? Before that, it's just kind of like after people have in bed, they want to go smoke a cigarette. I don't get it. That is what they're doing. They're just, it just, it, it's putting them at peace. Close them. Okay. Spouse looks down. I always watch this. So you have a man, you have a woman. We know that women are making the decision. We know that for sure. Okay. When the spouse looks down and she's no longer engaging in the deal, you're done. She's not buying or he's not buying. Okay. It could go either way. It could be the husband. But guess what? Do not go for the clothes. You have got to get them back engaged. All right. So resting hand on head, that's a positive sign. Anytime you see somebody resting their head on their hand, the customer's paying attention. They're enjoying what you're saying. Go for the clothes. You got them, man. They're all yours. It's like butter on bread. Time to go. Okay. Tilted head. That's a positive sign. I've learned that when I was, when I was younger, when I was 18. Anytime they start tilting their head, they're very interested. Go for the clothes. All right. I talk about like people like stroking their chin. You know what I'm saying? Like doing this. Guess what? Is that good or bad? That means they're trying to make a decision. Ask the customer to sign the order and tell them to shut up. I'm just kidding. Don't say that. <laughs> Listen, Tony's looking at me over here like, Andy, what are you talking about? Listen, don't say that. Anytime somebody's doing this, they're trying to make a decision. Do me a favor. Put the buyer's order in front of them. Say, sir, listen, I'm going to get your next oil change for free. Shake my hand. Let me get you home in your new vehicle. And by the way, let me think, just give them something. Give them a hug. I don't care, but take it down. They're this close to making a decision. You've got to wrap it up. Okay. All right. With that being said, but that's a good sign. It's not a bad one. It's a good one, but it means you need to move quick or it could go back the other way. They're close to making a decision, rubbing the chin. Okay. Hands or fingers over the mouth while speaking. This is a negative sign. It means the customer is probably lying. Okay. We force our customers to lie a lot. Anytime somebody's like, yeah, so, you know, I was kind of thinking that, hmm, they're trying to think of what to say next. Okay. Just remember I said that. That is a good sign to recognize. Okay. And you may say, Andy, is this going to help me make more money? Not if you want to make 50,000 a year. I'm talking about the guys that want to make 300,000 a year. You're going to need to know when to go for the close and when not to, because timing is everything and your words are everything. Okay. Your customers will give you the body language and their body language is so important. And also what type of customer you're dealing with and what they want is super important. And now you can take all your skill and apply this with it and don't get it confused. Just learn the four styles of salespeople. Or, I mean, of, of customers. Learn what they want and learn the body languages. You can do this in a day. You just got to really want to do it and you got to really want to grow. Okay. All right. So I got two more and we're done. I got looking down and the face is turned away. Anytime you're talking to somebody and they're like, that's a bad sign. Okay. That's negative. The customer has bought what you're saying, right? But they're not going to buy. They don't believe that it's the right product. They don't believe that maybe the offer is good enough. They don't believe that maybe if it is the right deal, that it will work for them. Okay. They just, or maybe they just don't believe you. That's a big one. Anytime somebody's looking away, you need to re-engage in that deal fast and get them turned back around. That is a bad, bad sign. Okay. Last one, hands in a pocket. Okay. Hands in pocket. That's a defensive de uh, gesture. The customer is afraid of you, insecure. Put the customer at ease by giving them a cup of coffee. Uh, go buy them a Coke or something. Say, hey, you know, listen, I I'm glad that you guys made it out. Look, you guys are great people. You sound like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know exactly what you're looking for. I'm honored to help you. Look, let me do this. Can I get you a hot cup of coffee? Look, let me get you a Coke. 
Ma'am, what would you like to drink? Would you like something hot or cold to drink? Start going into maybe like reciprocity, right? Which is like you do something for them and then they'll do something back for you, okay? And what would we like for them to do back for us? Take their dang hands out of their pocket, right? So they can get off the defense, get involved in the game, and then guess what? We can sell them, have a good time, advance the sell forward, and do great. So this video, like I said, just to sum it up, it's not complex. It's just not talked about a lot. And I know this, that 99% of the, the, the trainers, the managers, this is something that's talked a lot about in F&I training. If you want to honestly become the best salesperson in the country, if you were to ever go to an F&I training, you would learn a lot about the personality of people. Why? Because like as an F&I person, guess what you have? You have about one minute to build a relationship with them and you have about 15 to 20 minutes to go over compliance, legal, make your sell, make money, close them up and get them out of there. But you know what? As a salesperson, you think you've got all the time in the world so you don't focus on these key traits. Well, I wanna tell you this. If you wanna become the best salesperson in the country and make the most money, these negotiations and closing tips are unbelievable. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. You guys have an awesome day. If you need anything, make sure you click the link below and you download what we have. Um, and you can print out the sheet that I was just reading off of. And then you can look at it tonight. And then if you don't like one of them, scratch it off. No big deal. But have a blessed day and rock and roll.